So often when customers come to the website or they're shopping around for a sensor, uh, an inertial sensor for their product, um, they're going to often think of an INS and that's, that's all, they just heard INS. Um, but then that's, that's not really the case. Maybe they actually need a IMU, which is actually super simple and they, they're looking at a completely different price point. So um, understanding that the, there is a difference between an IMU, an AHARS, and an INS is going to help pick the right product for your specific application. Uh, the, the biggest misconception that people have about an INS is that it's just a GPS. It's not a GPS. It, it has a Coleman filter in it. It has uh, sensor fusion built into the device that gives you a much more accurate output. It's a very high quality device generally. So an INS um, is going to include a Coleman filter, which is going to consist of how the sensor itself fuses all of the individual parts into one and gives you a navigation output with everything incorporated. This often includes gyro, magnetometer, um, and accelerometer. And in, the, in an INS solution, it also includes GPS. So it'll take those things and give you a navigation output that your robot can then use to understand where it is in the world. When you're looking to implement an IMU, it is important to recognize that it is just going to be magnetometer, accelerometer, and gyro. Sometimes magnetometer won't be included in that package, and it will just be the random numbers that those little uh, devices will end up spitting out. And it won't have any smarts in it, it's just going to pump out numbers. Um, where you would, this would actually be very beneficial to use is in a camera, a stationary camera that all you care about is just knowing whether it's pointing at the ground or pointing at the ceiling. It's very basic, not a whole lot to it, but again, there's no position or anything else to it. A lot of people, when they're looking for um, a solution for their given application, they're gonna start at an INS level, which includes the magnetometer, gyro, and accelerometer, but it also includes a GPS. And it will fuse all of those sensors together to give you a robust um, navigation output that your system can actually use to drive around the world in and knows where exactly where it's at. So an IMU actually stands for inertial measurement unit. And that's that's all it is. It's just a simple basic unit. The next step up from there is AHARS, which stands for Attitude Heading Reference System. And that is going to actually include GPS. While it doesn't actually include a Coleman filter, it does give you all of the benefits of the IMU plus a GPS position. An AHARS unit would be a good fit for the, the people that already have a filter in mind that they've designed or already incorporated and they just want more sensor data pumped into it. Keep and then, and then the, the next step up from the AHARS is the INS that everybody is familiar with, the term INS. And that one, uh, it stands for Inertial Navigation System. And as the name implies, it is a smart system. It will take all of those sensors, it will fuse them into an output that your system doesn't have to do anything more with. It knows exactly where it is in the world based on just that output. You don't need to send it to anything else. The various sensors used in the device. The Coleman filter is actually a software package that uh, the sensor outputs are fed into and then the Coleman filter gives you a fused output that the rest of your robot can actually run on. Some of the extra special features that you can have that are exclusive to an INS is uh, being able to use RTK. Mm -hmm. RTK, real-time kinematics, 
is a process where you take a GPS position from a base station and you output corrections over to your rover, which is your generally your robot that's moving around. And in doing this combination of two GPS systems, you're able to get centimeter level accuracy. And this is only, you can only do this with an INS system. Another feature that can only be used with an INS is actually compassing. This is a, a newer technology, but it is still only usable on an INS solution. Um, and what that is, is where you take a uh, GPS 1 and you add a GPS 2. You have two GPSs for a single device, but based off of the distance between those two GPS positions, you can then derive heading between the two. And that gives you a very accurate um, heading dimension to your regular navigation system. The reason why compassing is such a, a great improvement for an INS solution is because you're able to get down to a much smaller accuracy than say a magnetometer. And a magnetometer is based off of an earth magnetic field. And whether you're pointing north, it's a compass. Um, but when you're using GPS, it doesn't care where north is really because it will always be able to derive your heading based off of those two GPS's. It's not going to be affected by a piece of metal going over it. It won't be affected by your cell phone. It'll just always work as long as you have a GPS position. So one of the, the end-all, be-all solutions that everybody really wants is, well, I can get great compassing, or co uh, compassing heading. Well, can I have position? accuracy too with RTK? And the answer is yes. You can actually put them together. Um, you just end up kind of doing a, a merge of the two. You'll have your base station and then you'll have a rover that has two GPS and it works the exact same way as RTK. You get the base position um, information sent over to the rover and then it does its position fix and then it also can take the heading information off of the two GPS positions and really give you a precise heading and position solution for your application. The value of using an RTK base is that if you work any type of triangulation based off of well, that base, you're able to get that position. Triangulation works on three points. In this case, you have an RTK base, you have a satellite, and then you also have your rover. And based off of the dimensions of that triangle that you then draw is how we're able to actually get an RTK position down to the centimeter level of accuracy. An INS with compassing um, still suffers from the basic GPS position. Um, GPS, in general, is hard to get better than one meter of accuracy. Um, and compassing is going to still suffer from that. While we are able to derive an accurate heading, given we have two, RT, or the two compassing positions on, uh, two GPS positions on our, uh, our rover, we cannot, we cannot derive a more accurate physical position information out of those two. You can average them, but that won't give you any more accuracy.